Hi guys, I'm James Hamilton from Stumpy Nubs Woodworking Journal, and I'm often asked if it's better to use a thin kerf or a full kerf saw blade. And I usually answer, it depends. Then I turn and walk away, because this is a big conversation, which inevitably leads to debates and arguments and sometimes punches. Some folks swear by thin kerf blades, and others say that they're overhyped gimmicks and they'll cause more harm than good. As with most things in life, the truth is somewhere in the middle. One person's experience doesn't always translate into hard, fast rules, no matter how hard and how fast he screams about it on the internet. So let's take just a couple minutes to look objectively at both sides of the issue. Let's start with the most obvious benefit of a thin kerf saw blade. It may help prevent your underpowered table saw from bogging down. And by underpowered, I mean some of the cheaper contractor saws that claim to be powered by a horse and a half, but let's face it, they perform like they're run by maybe a squirrel and a half. And I'm certainly also talking about the portable bench top and job site saws that have even smaller motors. You know if you have an underpowered saw, because it bogs down sometimes just ripping a two by four or even three quarter inch thick hardwood. And the most common solution is to slap a thin kerf blade on it and get back to work. The reason for that is a standard blade cuts an eighth of an inch wide swath through the wood, but a thin kerf blade's kerf is, well, thinner, by about 25%. Theoretically, a thin kerf blade would be able to be driven by 25% smaller horses. I say theoretically because this is where the arguments often begin. Some argue that slowing your stock feed rate will compensate for a weaker motor because the teeth of your full kerf blade will then take slightly smaller bites out of the wood and it takes less power to do that. The problem is the more teeth that spin inside your kerf, and they will spin more inside your kerf if you're slowing your feed rate, that will build up heat. And heat's a bad thing. Not only can it leave ugly scorch marks on your board, it can also cause the blade to expand and warp ever so slightly. And a blade that no longer runs perfectly true will chatter and leave teeth marks in the wood. It's always best to feed your stock as quickly or slowly as your blade can efficiently cut it. And there is no doubt that an underpowered saw can more efficiently cut with a thin kerf blade. Unless, instead of reducing the thickness of your blade, you reduce the number of teeth on it. Underpowered saws struggle most often when you're ripping a board along the grain because a rip cut is much longer than a cross cut. That's why they make dedicated rip blades with 24 teeth. Fewer teeth mean larger gullets between them. Larger gullets clear the sawdust more efficiently, they make cutting considerably easier, and they keep the kerf cooler, especially if you slow down to take smaller bites with your underpowered saw. So you're less likely to heat things up. But you live in the real world, don't you? You're not gonna swap blades back and forth every time you switch from making a cross cut to a rip cut. No, you're more likely to use a 40 or 50 tooth combination blade for all your cuts. And if your saw lacks power, then a thin kerf version of that blade is starting to make sense. But don't go out and buy one just yet. You have to consider the downsides of thin kerf blades. For starters, they vibrate more within the kerf. Your blade may run perfectly true when you turn on the saw, but bury that sucker in a chunk of thick hardwood and the forces it has to endure are intense. Remember, the steel is about 25% thinner than that of a full kerf blade. Or you can say that the steel of a full kerf blade is 33% thicker than that of a thin kerf one. However you do the math, thinner steel flexes more from lateral forces. You'll especially see the results of this when you try to trim a small strip from the edge of a board, or if you're cutting with the blade raised high above the table. It's no coincidence that just about every company that makes thin kerf table saw blades also sell metal stabilizer plates you can mount next to them to help stiffen things up. And these do help, but it also reduces your cutting depth above the table. And don't forget what I said about heat. If you're ripping a long thick board, things can heat up no matter the thickness of your blade. But that heat is more likely to warp a thinner blade than it is a thicker one, which is why thin kerf blades struggle to make glass smooth cuts in those situations. Thin kerf blades also present a math problem. While kerf widths may vary a tiny bit from blade to blade, 
good full kerf blades typically cut a nice even eighth inch wide kerf. Now that is easy to compensate for if I'm laying out project parts on my lumber. It's also very handy if I'm cutting a dado or groove without a dado set. I can make a cut, move the fence over an eighth of an inch, make another cut, and boom, quarter inch dado. Try doing that with a 332nd or 564th inch thin kerf blade. But wait a minute, you say. Doesn't that thinner kerf waste less wood? Yes, you will save about a 32nd of an inch of lumber per cut. Now, I have not personally ever understood how that can add up to anything significant unless you're ripping a hundred thin strips from some gold-plated rosewood. But one side benefit of turning less wood into sawdust, which I do understand, is it puts about 25% less dust in the air and in your dust collector. So let's review. The benefits of thin kerf blades include they require less power to run, they create less sawdust, and they eat up marginally less wood. The benefits of full kerf blades include they're less affected by heat, they're less affected by lateral stress, and they require less math. I personally believe you should use a full kerf blade if at all possible. But if your saw bogs down and you can't solve the problem by adjusting your feed rate or using a blade with fewer teeth, then a thin kerf blade may be right for you. I'm going to put some more links to some other videos we've made about table saw techniques and especially saw blades in the notes below this video. Just click on the little arrow to expand the description if you're on an app or on show more if you're on YouTube. You may be surprised what you didn't know you didn't know. If you get what you pay for, then why are bandsaw blades so inexpensive at sawblade.com? Seriously, they're as good as any I've used. They come in any size you need, and they cost quite a bit less than anything comparable at the woodworking retailers. Try them for yourself at the link below this video. You'll see. Wait, don't go yet. If you're new here, please subscribe and remember to ring the bell. I would really appreciate that. Give us a thumbs up, or better yet, leave us a comment. I always read them. And be sure to check out the latest issue of Stumpy Nubs Woodworking Journal. It's always packed with tips, tricks, and tutorials designed to make you a better woodworker.